my folks and Nikki from University of Wolverhampton. I'm here to help you keep an element of creativity in your homeschooling curriculum. Today's tutorial is aimed at key stages two and upwards, though supervision is strongly advised. We'll be taking our frustrations out in our work today, making some pounded leaf prints, which make fantastic greetings cards, bookmarks, or even wall hangings. You will need a hammer, mallet, or weighted object like a large stone, a selection of freshly picked leaves or flowers, a board such as a chopping board, paper, copy paper is fine, but watercolour works well too. You could use natural fabrics such as cotton. Optionally, you'll need tracing paper, baking paper or parchment, masking tape, a strong solution of black tea, a towel to absorb noise. You might choose to work outside for this activity because you'll be making lots of noise, but it'll also give you access to lots of natural resources. First, you'll need to collect a selection of fresh leaves or flowers. Leaves are my preference because we see more detail, though you might be more interested in colour. Just be careful which flowers that you choose. There are lots of toxic flowers such as foxglove, laburnum or ragwort around. These will give you an upset stomach if you don't wash your hands after handling them. It's best to choose leaves with more pronounced veins and not too dry, waxy or juicy. But it's worth experimenting to see what results you get. Once you've chosen your resources, you'll need to set up. Lay a folded towel on the floor or work surface you're going to be working at and place your board on top of the towel. This should muffle some of the sound from pounding. On top of this, place a sheet of tracing paper or similar. If you don't have anything like tracing paper, you could simply masking tape your leaves or flowers to the fabric or paper you're printing onto. But if it's paper, make sure you take some of the stickiness of the masking tape away by sticking it to your clothes and removing it several times. This should prevent the surface of the paper from tearing when you remove it. Arrange your foraged resources however you like. Try to make it look interesting and use the space carefully. Humans have a natural feeling for what looks good. We call this composition, for the elements that make up an image and how they are arranged. There are lots of rules of composition, but in reality, it's about arranging something in a way that visually looks interesting to most people. It helps not to just place your subject in the centre, but to find a way to lead the eye through the piece. Once you've arranged your resources, check that the most detailed side, such as the reverse of this leaf, where the veins are most prominent, is pressed against the surface that you intend to print on, in this case the paper. Try not to overlap too much, else you'll lose definition. And if your resources are bulky, you can trim them down, for example by cutting away where a stem meets a flower. Now lay your tracing paper over the top and turn over. Mind your fingers and pound. If you've used masking tape, you'll want to be hitting the opposite side of the paper or fabric. I'm using copy paper here, so you can see how the paper absorbs the chlorophyll or pigment as you hammer away. You will also find this with most fabrics. You can peel back to check halfway, but when you're happy you have a print, remove what's left of the leaf or flower from the paper. You get unpredictable results depending on the thing that you use. Sometimes the colour will be completely different from what you'd expect. Nature provides all kinds of interesting dyes. When it's dry, you can leave it as it is or work into it to pick out the details with a fine liner, for example. One tip that some people like to use is to spray the print on both sides with a strong solution of tea. This helps to bring out the pigment thanks to a substance called tannin and tea. It also helps age the paper or fabric a little, adding to the visual effect of the print. Let it dry flat. If you've used fabric, remember that these prints are not made to be washed. They work best as a picture or maybe a wall hanging. And here are the finished prints. I was particularly pleased with this little viola, the only flower in my garden. I used watercolour paper for this one. When you've finished, just return your bits of leaf or flower mush to nature, and they'll compost down to provide nutrients for a new generation of growth. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and you'll consider sending us a picture of your work. Follow us on Facebook for more creative tutorials for all ages coming soon.